can't say you thrive through superior logic if that superior logic has never been tested as an organized thought. Mbalula speaks about the EFF is an anarchist, demagogy, and all of that, yet they say they thrive on superior logic. And then he doesn't say, Mbalula doesn't say EFF, by the way. Every time he speaks, he speaks, he says Malema. And he becomes personal like that. He calls my grandmother's surname at every turn. And when I respond, I'm going to be accused of being personal. But I'm being attacked here. My grandmother's surname is being used to attack a cause. Then he says, these people, uh, they say they thrive on superior logic. This is not superior logic. But how can Mbalula know superior logic? How come? Because Mbalula has never set for metric for his organized thought to be tested. Huh? He has never done course one and course two for his organized thought to be tested. Because you can, it can only be a superior logic if your thought process has been subjected to peer review and you know that your peers appreciate your thinking. Adverts, you don't defend the thesis. You defend the proposal. They say, what do you want to write about? You say, this is what I want to write about. They say, okay, come here. Come and present it in the master's class where your peers are and they engage you. I've done that. Mbalula has not done that. And therefore, he doesn't qualify to speak about a superior logic because his organized thought has never been tested. So, I mean, I'm not shocked because the guy became in Kunzi. Yom Ketwa Mkweta Mkweta La. In Kunzi Yom Kweta La in Eastern Cape. Yeah, in the Western Cape. Yeah, Cape Town, yeah. That figure up. Because Bate Gum Umkatao is kidnapped. That figure to come and liberate him. When I arrived there with guns, but uh, it's too late. It's done. Inkunz umketa mkweta mkweta. Inkunz. Inkunz umkweta means you umkweta. You went there when you were too old. I called him. I warned him. I said, don't, 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 don't start with me. Don't start with me because if those people are pumping you and saying you are our match, you'll, you'll cry very soon. Do not become personal. So all I'm saying is that we don't want Mbalulas in the EFF. We want you to learn and become the best of the best. You know where to find them. You can't be lost. So, we cannot debate why we must go to school because as we speak today, the sewer systems are blocked. Fighters, 20th of March, we are not fighting with anyone. We are not saying to anybody, you have wronged us. All we are asking for is for one man to step aside. It's for ESCOM to give us electricity. It's for the government to give us jobs. It can't be correct. That 60% of young people are unemployed and you call yourself an organization of the people and you do nothing about it. The streets are calling and we've never been scared of the streets. We are a protest movement. What we did in parliament, say I've got a personal relationship with Cyril Ramaphosa. If I were to bump to, uh, to him now, I'm going to shake his hand, I'm going to take a picture with him. But it means nothing. 
I politically fundamentally disagree with you. And that should not be confused for personal attacks. This immaturity of South African politics that uh, if you, you, you know Cyril Ramaphosa, you can't disagree with him. Mbalula is my friend. I disagree with him fundamentally. I've got many friends in the ANC. I don't agree with them. And they know that when we start debating politics, we can't find each other. So we avoid talking politics. What is common between me and Balula? We support Paris, both of us. So it's easy to talk about Paris. But if I must choose between Mbalula and the EFF, I will choose the EFF any day. I will not choose it. So there is nothing personal against President Ramaphosa. Personally, he's a very good guy. What did the president do? He did nothing. That is exactly why he must go, for doing nothing. You can't be on top and do nothing. That is the most irresponsible act of a man, to be on top and do nothing. So, he promised us jobs. There are no jobs. In parliament there, when we were fighting, we're not fighting, we're not going to attack Ramaphosa. We'll never do that. We're not crazy people. Why? We sit with Ramaphosa. I told them yesterday, the only place where the president does not have bodyguards is parliament. We sit with him there, with no bodyguards. You can go and check everywhere. When the president sits down, behind him there is a bodyguard, not in parliament. Well, that is a safe heaven. No one must get injured there for holding a different view. What happens? I go to the stage to protest. I'm holding a placard like this. They say I was a danger to the president. A danger is a person who you can't see the hands. That's why they always say hands up. My hands were up. To show that I come in peace. Here is my placard. I'm not fighting. I get beaten for coming in peace. And then it gets celebrated in South Africa that he was a threat to the president. I was not a threat to the president. I don't fight my politics physically. It doesn't mean I'm a coward. If a need comes, I fight physically. I'm not scared. But I don't fight my politics physically. I was going to stand on the stage with a placard and allow Ramaphosa to speak. And I'll also be speaking through my placard, through silent protest, through peaceful protest that is protected by the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa. And you require nobody's permission to get into protest. So when we go to police station and say, tomorrow we'll be marching from 9 to uh, 12, it's not a permission we're seeking. We're giving them information so that they can organize alternative routes. They confuse that to be seeking a permission. There is a constitutional court decision that nobody requires a permission to protest. And we'll be doing so on the 20th of March. We don't need anyone's permission. All of you seated here, you should be identifying the road or which one are you going to occupy. You should be identifying which comp shopping complex are you going to occupy. Which city are you going to close? And start sending them letters now. Please be informed. On the 20th of March, there is no work. There is no school. Everything stops. No truck will be moving. If there are taxi associations like here in the Cap Metro, by now you should have had meetings with them on how you are going to complement and support one another because we are not fighting with the taxis and those ones of metro buses by now they should have been told that on the 20th there is no bus that moves 
South Africa must come to a standstill. We must challenge white monopoly capital and we must show them that we don't need a permission from the Rupert, from the Minel, from the Oppenheimers. We don't need a permission from the ANC and from Mbalula. Who says no? People must go to school and children must go to work. We are not going to any school. And there are no children who are going to any work here. So it is going to come to a standstill. And that's when the EFF is going to show the mass power. And the Western Cape cannot be a failure. You are not going to fail. And remember, we are not going to start at 8 o'clock in the morning. 12 o'clock start, to, I mean, uh, the 20th starts at 12 midnight. The preparations must be made from 12 midnight. By the time the people wake up, everything is happening. They are able to take pictures and send to their bosses. It's not going to happen today. Today is not happening. So fighters, the militancy and the protest movement character of the EFF, the fearless character of the EFF, the ground forces of the EFF, your determination to liberate the people of South Africa is going to be seen on the 20th of March when you bring South Africa to a standstill. Thank you very much.